In Britain, a specialist who scanned many accident victims is Dr. Ivan Mosley of London's National Hospital. We have an example here of the most common condition which can occur after head injury, and this is uh, a collection of blood between the brain and the skull itself, which presses on the brain and can indeed uh, result in, in death. Uh, to show this uh, before the advent of CT would have meant carrying out cerebral angiography with injections of rather toxic substances into the arteries leading to the brain, but here, very quickly and easily, within 10 minutes of the patient coming into hospital, we have the answer. This was an alcoholic who fell in the street, and you see here this large collection of blood, which is less dense than the brain, as we can see here, and it's displacing the ventricles away to this side and compressing the whole of the brain, expanding in this region. This is a, a life-threatening blood clot. This is a girl who after a party was beaten up by her boyfriend. And here on the left side is the area of contusion, which is seen in area, as an area of low density, with little spots of blood within it. And on the next cut, you see the ventricles once again displaced away from the side of the abnormality, and some blood here, which is seen to be less dense than the skull, which lies between the brain and the skull. Now the scan here tells us, it explains uh, her condition, but it also, it's clear that this is a condition which does not require surgical treatment. And so this is very important in the management of, the, of this patient. The third example that I've uh, got here is a, a boy who was shot by his brother uh, with an air gun. And the, the bullet entered the skull and passed more or less to the middle. And here is the point of entry of the bullet through the bone of the temporal region. And the track we see on the next cut. Here we can see the track through the brain showing us exactly where it passed. We can see on these uh, pictures that there is a star effect, lines radiating from the position of the bullet. This is because the bullet, uh, which is very dense, it's made of lead, uh, produces artifacts in the computer that it's as though the computer can't believe that the bullet is as dense as it really is and so it attributes some of its density to the surrounding brain, producing this effect that looks rather like the moment, moment of impact of the bullet upon the brain. And uh, it was able, we were able to see from the position of this bullet on the scan that, once again, this was not in a life-threatening position, and it was decided that it would be better not to remove this bullet. We recently saw another patient who came into hospital uh, complaining of pain in the head. It wasn't until after he'd been scanned that it became apparent that he too had a bullet in the head. In the United States, local hospitals often get their scanner because leading lights in the community band together to pay for it. How about that? Now we can take a view of your head. You want us to see if there's anything up there? The fundraisers are being shown the new scanner by the hospital president. We have this very nice dance in January, a dinner dance. And all the proceeds that's raised at this dance will go towards the cost of the scanner, as will proceeds from our gift shop here in the hospital. And we have a fashion show in spring. And this is also earmarked for the scanner, because it is a very large sum of money, but we feel it's worth every penny. When we see an EMI scan, we're slicing through the patient's body and looking at them as if they're a tree trunk. And in this picture, we see the kidneys. So you see they're located toward the back of the body. On this view, we see the aorta. All this is small intestine in the front of the abdomen. We see the spine, and all these white areas are ribs. We have controls that we can make the picture very dark, block out everything except calcium, which is in the spine, and make it very light. I had a question on the uh, white marking up here. The small one. The small one, yes. That's calcium in the patient's aorta. So it's probably a patient above 50. Bangkok, and a blessing for the first EMI scanner in mainland Asia. It's the latest head machine, CT-1010. It scans in just one minute. Only seven years before, the first experimental scan had taken nine days. 
Britain, the birthplace of CT, and the assembly lines where, in less than a decade, an invention has grown into a worldwide industry with potential benefits to medicine so vast they're almost impossible to measure. Each machine is tested for eight days. The disc of plastic stands in for the future patient. It simulates the full range of densities found in the human body, from the lowest, the air trapped in our lungs, to the densest, our bones. The machine is so sensitive that it will distinguish tumors from surrounding healthy tissue. A fine beam of x-rays from this tube will rotate around the patient, giving a quarter of a million readings in each picture and able to identify the tissue density of areas no larger than a pinhead. Detectors receive the rays. A computer turns them into a picture that will show up abnormalities with a clarity never achieved before by x-rays. Completed scanners on its way. X-rays, computers, display devices married into a self-contained diagnostic system of which 95% go off to the corners of the globe. EMI's first scanners planted the flag of the new medical revolution on America's soil back in 1973. It was a successful trial of the early brain machine at two major American hospitals and, later, the trials of the first EMI body machine jointly in Britain and the United States that made the new world the most outspoken advocate of CT scanning. EMI trains engineers and hospital staff in the United States. Check that the patient is indeed in the place where you'd set him and press the start scan button. The training is helping to meet an almost overwhelming level of demand for CT scanning. It's helping turn a new technology into an everyday tool. So we'll continue for 20 seconds, taking 18 traverses, 10 degrees of data on each traverse. You know this CT scanner is really quite a revolutionary development and it's forcing us as radiologists to, uh, to make a lot of changes in the way we do things. We're used to dealing with films. Dr. Gilbert Yost of the Mallinckrodt Institute, the world's biggest X-ray center. Our data now is stored on magnetic tapes like this, and it's, uh, it's, as I say, forcing us to reassess the way we store information about these patients. Terminals like this are scattered throughout our department, uh, collecting information about our patients. We're uh, increasingly using it to uh, monitor the function of our EMI scanners and to process the data from our EMI head and body scanners. Uh, we certainly see a day when information from these CT scans will be stored in a central data bank within a computer and uh, computers from various parts of the country can have access to those scans. It will be possible to transmit scans over telephone lines to different parts of the country so that uh, a patient out in the country who can't get to a major medical center could have a CT scan done near their home and that information could be transmitted to the uh, expert at a medical center for interpretation. Godfrey Hansfield has gained many international awards, but the man who first coupled the computer with x-rays is modest about his success. I think I'm, I'm very lucky to have thought of this, uh, this idea. I was thinking about it quite a lot wandering around the countryside. 
things seem to just have dropped into place like a jigsaw right from the very start. I get quite a number of letters from people who've had scans, had an operation and uh, have written to me thanking me very much for the, the scanner. It is very gratifying to know that I may have helped a little towards the conquest of disease. Germany, the birthplace of X-rays. Still known here as Röntgen rays after the physicist whose pictures of a woman's hand nearly a century ago changed the course of diagnosis. Now Röntgen marches on, his discovery enhanced beyond measure by the scanner. Berlin takes delivery of EMI's 5005 system, the first rapid body scanner to be installed in Germany. Dr. Ron Evans, chief of the Malincrot Institute, believes many of the benefits are still to come. I think that the major possible roads for the future with CT are several. One will certainly be in treatment planning, staging of patients with cancer, and their follow-up. Because the decision as to whether the treatment is surgery, or radiation therapy, or chemotherapy, various drugs, has to be made with an exact analysis of how far the cancer has spread. And this better image of the body by CT now allows us to have a new device to make that kind of decision. There are some other areas that will be a very important part of CT in the future. Heart disease, the application to uh, the skeletal system, the application to the chest, the application to the extremities. We're just beginning to work on that. So that's the challenge for the physicians. Many institutions around the world will be making those evaluations with new improvements in technology, with new improvements that we find as physicians. Uh, I think that we'll be able to demonstrate soon very many uses to nearly every patient with disease that CT has made possible. And the challenge to us as physicians, to the companies who are providing us the equipment to make this a more important uh, procedure, both in diagnosis and therapy, is our challenge for the future. So, bitte mal einatmen. Nochmal einatmen. Aus. 